we, like many, um, mo made most of our money from in-person and live events and workshops. And of course, that instantaneously disappeared. Um, and so we, like many, were forced to pivot. Um, uh, and we took advantage of online learning, but we wanted to do it consistent with our own values. Um, um, we did live classes um, because we wanted to retain some sort of human connection as opposed to just on-demand classes. Um, we called up people who we knew, who work, whose work we admired, and we said, you're struggling too. Why don't you come and do, share your, your genius on our platform? Um, and it became a very cooperative thing. But there's a few tactics that I learned um, to get from A to B that were really helpful that I never would have done if I didn't have that extreme pressure. So one of the things we did is we, we shared with the team the vision, um, which we had. Um, and then we said to the whole team, uh, we can't do this alone. This is, this is literally a team effort. And so what I want is I want 15 ideas from each person in the next 48 hours about how we can deliver on that vision. And the team freaked out. 15 ideas in 48 hours and if they wanted to work in teams I was fine with that um, and I and and the reason for that is um, the pressure you know if I gave them three weeks well they would have all done the work the 48 hours before anyway so you know uh, 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 so that was academic but the important thing was the reason for 15 ideas is because if I only asked for two or three or three or four those would be the same ideas I came up with um, uh, and I wanted, it's the idea that 11, 12, and 13 that were the brilliant ones. And when we came together to report out, we did it in sort of a unique way. I sort of gave this little speech where I said, okay, um, uh, this is not a competition. This is about contribution. If one person has six amazing ideas and you have none, instead of being angry, say thank you, because they just saved your job because they had a great idea. Also, what I learned is that there's a, there's a difference between somebody who has an idea and somebody who's good at executing an idea. And the reality is the most creative people in the team that could come up with the ideas weren't the best at executing them. And the ones that didn't have that many ideas, they were great at executing ideas. So it became really interesting to see who were my creators and who were my executors from that one meeting. And we played boggle rules. If you ever played the game boggle, if somebody else has your word, you just skip over it and move on. I said, if somebody says your idea, don't bother saying, well, I had that idea too. I'm not keeping score. I don't care. Simply move on and tell me something else on your list. And we only let people re report out two or three ideas at a time. That way we could sort of get a, a flavor. And what ended up happening was people would build on the ideas that they heard. And the set of ideas that we had at the end became our ideas. Nobody could claim them anymore because we'd all sort of tinkered with them. And then we broke them into three buckets, green, yellow, and red. A green idea was an idea we could execute with the money we had and we could execute it within the week. A yellow idea was an idea that needed a little more resource, probably take a week to a month. And a red idea, no matter how good it was, was too expensive or take too long. And we just parked it and said, we'll deal with those one day. And we just took all our green ideas and executed them.